Thank you for joining us, and uh, I'm here with uh, my director of open government, Ms. Donna Fry, who uh, has been laboring over a number of initiatives which will uh, soon bear fruit, including the one today. Uh, I see we're all ready to go. Yeah. I mean, it's clear, uh, uh, certainly to the media and to the public, that uh, transparency, as uh, we call it, is crucial if the public uh, is, is going to be involved in the, uh, in the governance, uh, in their own governance. Uh, they have to know what's happening. The public has to know what's happening, and they have to know it at a, uh, at a, at a time when it means something. What we are going to do today is uh, open up a whole new uh, uh, vista, as it were, for on our website that will be available to all San Diegans, of course the press, for information whenever they need it. There have been some recent uh, propositions and ordinances passed by the uh, one passed by the City Council, the Sunshine Law, was Sunshine it? Act. Sunshine Act last year which said that certain information shall be available on, uh, on our city websites by July. We are ahead of that schedule with uh, today's announcement. Uh, Proposition A and B, both on the ballot last, uh, last uh, June, which were approved by the voters, also had certain requirements for posting of information with regard to contracts, uh, with regard to um, pensions, all those will be on the uh, website starting today. It happens to be, by the way, uh, Sunshine Week in America. Uh, there has been a, uh, an effort over the last few years to, uh, to stress that uh, there shall be sunshine in government. So we are issuing a proclamation uh, that, uh, that uh, supports March 11th to 16th as uh, Sunshine Week, uh, which we're in the middle of. And as the proclamation says, and as the, those who have been promoting this around the country say, this is a national initiative to promote a dialogue about the importance of open government and freedom of information. And the participants in doing this include the media, uh, government, civic groups, libraries, nonprofits, schools, of course, and members of the public. And uh, whereas, uh, as it says in the proclamation, City of San Diego shares those goals, uh, for example, uh, you know, on the first Saturday of every month, uh, I meet in open dialogue with, uh, in the lobby of uh, City Hall with anybody who would like to talk to me. Uh, we've created the first ever uh, the director of open government position to increase access to city information. And so we uh, have proclaimed this uh, in San Diego Sunshine Week in our city. Uh, we are launching today, right? Today. Our, we our new website, having the information that we think uh, members of the public are entitled to and will help them understand government, uh, we will always continue to improve it and take any suggestions to do that. But I'd like uh, Donna to uh, run through that uh, website to let us know what uh, she's been doing in her 90 days as a provisional <laughs> employee. <laughs> Thank you. And one, one of the things I just want to add um, is that in the Filner administration, um, open government isn't just political rhetoric. It actually means something, and those words are being put into action. The other thing that I think is really important to know that under um, working with Mayor Filner, which I'm so pleased to do, that it's not just Sunshine Week in March. It's Sunshine Week every week here in the city of San Diego, and we're making some major improvements. Today I'm going to go over to the uh, computer and just share with you um, some of the things that we have been doing to um, essentially meet the, the minimum standards required by various city ordinances and voter initiatives. But in addition to that, we wanted to go beyond just establishing a floor for what is required. We wanted to make it easier for the public to participate in their government because the public has a right to know what their government is doing and why they're doing it. This is just the first step. This, these web pages are just a start and it will be an iterative process. We will be continually soliciting information and, and things that people need or want to find on the city's website to help them access information and improve their quality of life. So I'm just going to go over to the computer and I'll start walking you through that. Um, this first page, the home page, uh, shows some of the 
um, many people that our mayor has been meeting with, uh, it's now two Saturdays that he's done this, where hundreds of people show up and have direct access to our mayor. I believe this is probably a first in the city of San Diego, and the citizens are very excited about it, and they, they, they come with their issues and, and get help from the mayor. The next page, and this is a page that I'm sure a lot of you will want to spend some time looking at, um, we called it the required document postings. And essentially, the first, I'll pull this up so you can see it, as required by um, Proposition B, there was a requirement that the city post um, on its website the final job classification held for all the city retirees. And essentially what this does is it lists all the city retirees, their job, and how much they make. The, the next issue, or the next line item, is a list of lawsuits. The municipal code requires that the city attorney post um, on a weekly basis a litigation log that shows you the case name, the case number, the date served, and the date filed. So anybody interested in finding out the litigation that's going on um, on a regular basis within the city of San Diego can access that. And I'll just pop this back to the next one. Was, was that something that was already on the website? But not it, was, it was on the website. Some of these have been on the website, but they haven't been linked, and most people are unaware that they even exist. Um, it was... It was a requirement, I believe, back from 2005 when we amended the permanent rules of council. The neighborhood construction project tracking was um, something that the city council was looking to do so that people could understand better um, what was happening in their communities as far as dif different projects. So you can now go to this search tool. You can view a list of projects by council district, and you can also view a map of projects by address. This is, again, one of, those, one of those links that we're spending a lot of time trying to make better and make it easier for the public to use. Um, as part of Proposition B, oh, I guess this was Proposition, oh, this was the Sunshine Act. The Sunshine Act that was passed by the council um, in November of last year required that employee compensation information be posted um, on the city website that is the same information that is sent to the state controller's office. And so here is that. We have reports going back um, 2009, 2010, and 2011. And once, the, um, once that information is sent to the state, um, it will also be posted on this website. The city construction contracts, this was part of a ballot measure passed by the voters. It was Proposition A. And it required that construction contracts that exceeded $25,000 need to be posted online, which they are. Um, it also required that the number of bidders would be listed, um, how many people had actually bid on that contract, provide the contract information for the project, and additionally that if there were a sole source contract, and I'll find one to show you. For example, any sole source contract, if you click on that, it required that there was written justification for that, and that is um, also provided. Let me just back up here a little bit. The City Council also passed in November of 2012 a requirement that the memorandums of understanding or the agreements that we have with our um, labor organizations be posted online, and those are here and it shows, it goes back to 2000 and, um, I think 2006 in some instances, it's hard, yeah, 2006, so that the public has the ability to read those contracts if they so desire. And finally, um, someone had asked if we could add a campaign and lobbyist disclosures um, link, which actually would allow the public to look at the um, campaign disclosures, as well as lobbyist disclosures, in addition to any of the gifts that are received from elected officials. So this links the public with this public access portal, and they are able to get that information whenever they want. Um, we'll go up to 
then we wanted to make sure that the public could find information um, on some of these issues as quickly as possible. So we put together a public notices web page. This deals with issues CEQA, public hearings, CEQA notices, and notices of rights to appeal, environmental determinations. One of the city council members um, had particularly asked that this information be more accessible because they were having a hard time finding it. In addition, we added a page that makes it easy to find different meetings and agendas, <coughs> including the city council, the various city council committees, city boards and commissions, all the community planning groups so that you can link and find out about it, as well as the planning commission. In addition, we added a public participation link that would allow people to see their different um, options when they want to, um, for example, comment online to a city council member about an item that's on the agenda. This gets them right to the agenda comment form, so all they have to do is fill it out and send it off. Um, we also wanted to provide some background for people, for example, if they wanted to speak at a city council meeting and give them um, information about how to do that, how to address council on agenda items, so that if they weren't sure that they would be able to understand that. We also, again, put links to the community planning groups. There's over 40 community planning groups, and we wanted to make sure people could access that information quickly. In addition, if you wanted to file a Public Record Act request, that page has been updated so that if you want to file one, you can go right to the second paragraph where it says, please direct public records request to the city clerk. When you click on there, that will immediately connect you up to the city clerk and you can file your um, Public Records Act. And finally, this is, again, this is a work in progress. This is the outside resources page, which we'll be updating on a regular basis. But what we wanted to do was start with two of the basic laws in the state of California. First, the California Public Records Act. And to do that, we'll, we took them right to the, um, the government code section so they would have that. And also the California, um, the Brown Act, which is the state's open meeting laws. So this is the beginning of the launch. We have also been working with a variety of other entities um, and open government organizations. We, we are seeking input to make this a better, um, a better open government you know, page site so that we can provide the public with the information they need in as timely a manner as possible. Any questions? Yes, sir. Um, we only go so far in this open government. Yeah. And what the retainer arrangement is? Uh, if I may, let me just take questions on this thing, and then I'll I'll, I'll be happy to ask, answer any others. Okay? Is, is, is there any on the web pages per se? And we'll yes, Lisa. Yeah, yeah. We're, as uh, Donna said, this is a work in progress. We're going to be adding these things. We wanted to, uh, on Sunshine Week, start this. Uh, we'll be adding those things. Um, we've come, you know, there's, there's problems with uh, some of what I stated in terms, say, of security, and my police detail doesn't has stuff about how far in advance you're going to publish your, your schedule. And so, so we're working that stuff out, and uh, we'll be able to get that on. Yes, sir. Mayor, Ken Stone Catch, um, was the city technically um, breaking the law for years by not having some of this information out there? No, you know, most of this was a recent, recent uh, either law ordinances by the city council, which gave till July 1st of this year. The other was the, uh, the, the, uh, the props A and B, which passed uh, in June and had to be implemented within a certain period of time. No, we have, I don't think we have been out of compliance. But we're, we're not only, as Donna said, want to be the you know, the uh, standard by law, but then go above that wherever possible and uh, make other information, other links, just to make convenient this whole notion of uh, being in, in contact with your government. How would you compare uh, this site to other large city sites? Do you have any way of saying this is maybe the best open government site in the country, or do you have any way of comparing? We are obviously the best. 
Well, I, I believe that, um, at least to my knowledge, and you can certainly run a fact check, and I wish you would, um, I believe <laughs> that uh, Mayor Filner is probably the first mayor in the state of California to appoint a director of open government, to the best of my knowledge. No huckster propaganda, but that's what I believe to be the case. Um, second, I believe it to be the case that this, this, all this information combined, I think there are probably other cities that post retiree salaries, or there might be other cities that post employee wages. I have not seen, and to the best of my knowledge, these required document postings, that portion of it is probably at the top 90th percentile of disclosable information throughout the state of California and probably other places. Uh, I want to ask you, why it's important to have this open government for you? Why is this important? Oh. Well, I mean, that's the hallmark of democracy and, uh, and, and uh, representative government, that uh, if people do not know what's going on, if people don't have it in a timely fashion, if they, uh, they can't navigate it, as we would say, if they don't know how to participate, there is really no democracy or no representative government. I mean, it's uh, and it's a uh, it's a constant. Uh, it should be a constant uh, kind of uh, commitment and reminder to us. Uh, most of us operate, you know, in a bubble down here at City Hall or in Sacramento or in Washington, and you forget how limited the the access to knowledge is, and you have to make sure that you're constantly thinking about what the how the average person knows about what's going on, and uh, make that accessible to them so they can participate. I think some of the uh, the low voter turnouts, the, uh, so the lack of participation, because people don't know how, they don't think it's worth anything, they don't think they have any uh, input or any influence in what goes on, and uh, because they don't have access to the information, they just feel uh, like, uh, how, do, how do you combat the, the, you know, the bureaucrats or the office holders who are there uh, in a fair way? As many of you know, the first time I ever came into contact with local government, I went to a school board meeting, and they basically laughed at me that I didn't have enough information. I went there as a concerned parent. I was just trying to you know, make sure my kids and my community had the best, and they, they said, well, why didn't you know all this or that? I said, well, nobody told me. Uh, and uh, so I'm very sensitive to that, and, uh, but it's a constant, we need constant reminders from you all and the public about what kind of things and what format, because you get, you get caught up in a bubble here and you forget that other people do not have the same access or the same sense or the same uh, information coming up to them at all directions. Did you want anything? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the, the existing ordinance uh, that said 90 days for someone in Donna's position, that is, who had worked for the city before, is coming coming up soon. Uh, we will have an ordinance to the city council which ex uh, basically expands the number of days that you can be a provisional employee. And let me make clear, and uh, Mr. DeMaio, wherever you are, uh, uh, who I think had an op-ed today, uh, there is no double dipping here. I mean, I agree with the 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 attempt uh, or the ordinance that says, uh, and the uh, intent of the ordinance is to prevent people who have retired and then coming back and getting you know more and more benefits. Miss Fry is working for a salary with no other benefits, no pension, no health care, no uh, no no other benefits. She is getting a salary, and. What, so there is no double dipping here. We want to make use of her talents and her commitment to the city, uh, but without having any impression or any fact of double dipping. She has her pension from the time she served in the city council. She has certain uh, benefits from that. She doesn't need them again. And so we will ask the city council to extend a number of days to, to basically a, a year, at, you know, I mean a year's working days to uh, be able to do that under these conditions, that a, formal, a former city council person uh, can work for the city without double dipping uh, for, you know, for, for, uh, for the whole year. Do you believe you have the votes for that? 
I don't know. For, for, for what do you believe? I'm sorry? Right, right. Yeah, I, I, we've just defined the number of days to allow a, a, a year for her, a working time for her or anybody else who falls into her classification. Yeah, be followed by a second year, a third year. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's, it says it's, it, it opens up the number of days per year that you can serve as a provisional employee. Well, it's whatever makes it a working year. What's the salary? Is it one twenty-five? And then what's the pension pay? One hundred. What I've got on sheet. My salary. Yes, your salary would on an annual. Basis. My salary is a hundred thousand dollars, but as a provisional, I am an hourly employee. Just so you know. Hourly at the rate of approximately forty-eight dollars an hour. Okay, and the pension is. My pension is approximately gross. I believe is. About thirty-one or thirty-two thousand dollars on an annual basis. And what do you, what's your response to the Miles criticism? What is my response to who? To Miles my response is who? <laughs> <laughs> um, your response would be mayor. Uh, as, as I said, I, I mean there is no double dipping. We we agree with the intent of the ordinance. There is no double dipping. She is paid for her salary. She uh, earned a pension as a council member. She earned certain benefits as a council member. She keeps those, but we are not adding to those in any way. Why make a special exception for, for her and mechanics to see council? Because we want to utilize their talents. Would this be available at some point to other employees whose talents want to be used, like Mr. Aguirre used to use Bruce Henderson on a 90-day basis? Could this be... Yeah, I think we have that. It, we, I think just because we wanted to limit it, limit the universe, I think we said uh, uh, any ex-council people, no ex-mayor, no ex-city attorney, no ex, uh, just council members. We wanted to limit the universe uh, very drastically. And as for uh, your attorney in the TMB litigation and the retainer arrangement? You know, uh, the uh, city council has a, approved my outside council. Uh, and that that contract is now, in fact, in, <laughs> in the city attorney's office being approved. So uh, when that is signed, uh, we'll we'll have that. Uh, the retainer is for the matter of uh, TMD versus Robert Earl Filner, uh, and it's a firm from uh, L.A. or no, actually, uh, I get L.A. or Orange County now. Higgins and Jenkins. Yeah, I, I mean, both of those people are the council. It's a small firm. <laughs> it's both Higgins and Jenkins. <laughs> and is this through the hearing on the 22nd or going forward to appellate uh, review? Or what yeah, any, uh, I mean, any further uh, legal action after the, after the 22nd uh, would have to be approved by the council. Is that a firm that you know, or how did you come across them? Through various uh, references. They're, they, they, I think they're experts in uh, municipal law, I mean, is how they came to our attention. Would litigation record um, take in um, more than just the career court? Does it go to the federal court? Does it uh, ring with these uh, proofs uh, about his arrest that's uh, an occupier? Uh, I'm sorry? Does the litigation log on the site oh, oh. include federal cases as well as uh, local the, the The litigation log, to the best of my knowledge, which is um, updated by the city attorney's office, is supposed to include all litigation um, involving the city of San Diego. I thought you were asking for my litigation, right? <laughs> 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 any, any thoughts about the uh, the uh, tentative ruling that is pending in Department Fifty One Superior Court, uh, maybe issued uh, and sent out by mail uh, late tomorrow or something? But what are your thoughts as to? Well, as I mean, it's no secret. I, I don't think either the. Uh, the TOT tax, which was imposed for the convention center funding, or the so-called TMD assessment that was imposed uh, in the case I'm involved with, uh, I don't think are legal. I think they are clear taxes. Taxes by the California Constitution have to be approved by the voters. And uh, I just don't understand. Uh, on my case, for example, in the TMD case, uh, the uh, the uh, hotel industry keeps saying this is self-assessment. But I asked them, why do you need the government involved in this? I mean, these are private 
folks. They always want to manage comp and, uh, you know, privatize. So I said, why do you need the government? And they said, well, because not everybody will pay. So I said, let me see. When you have use the government to force a payment of a self-assessment by those who don't want to pay, seems to be a tax to me. And, by the way, the, the actual ballot that was done, I mean, they sent out 1,300 ballots. Uh, 900 or more did not even come back, so I can say they did not support that. Um, but even of the ballots that came back, I think the vote was... Uh, uh, you guys, anybody remember? It was like, no, wait, wait, wait. See, it was like the, the number of ballots. It was like 350 to 217 against. It's 350 to 217 against. That is, most of the people who voted, let alone uh, in, in, in the city, didn't want that self-assessment. So it's, it becomes a tax because they are forced to vote. And, you know, the 94% is a weighted vote by the value of the hotels. Nine hotels control the majority of that whole vote, nine. So to call this a, uh, a vote by the hotel owners of the city or even the tourist industry is just wrong. And so that's why I think it is a tax. It is a, a vote by a few big hotels to force everybody to pay an assessment. And if you uh, go to any hotel and ask uh, for a printout of their, uh, their room uh, bills, it says uh, TMD assessment slash tax. I mean, it says tax right on the, uh, on, the, on the hotel bill. Same with the, uh, it'll be with the convention center thing. So I, I think that will be appealed. But uh, in our case, I think it's a lot more clear because of the numbers involved and because it, it's, it's not even uh, a TOT. I mean, it's a, so, quote, self-assessment. And it's clear this is no self-assessment. I mean, because nobody has any choice on the matter. I call that a tax. Thank you all very much. Happy Sunshine Week.